I have been looking forward to this day for such a long time, a day when youth from all over the world would gather to share their testimony of Jesus Christ. We are so grateful you are here and for the power that will come as you share your witness of Jesus Christ. We wish we could be with you to hear your testimonies as they are shared all over the world. This is truly a first in time exciting event for the youth of the church to be able to bear testimony together around the world. Where it's, a, it's an historic event and a truly a unique opportunity. As I've traveled the world this past year, I have really enjoyed hearing the youth talk about their experiences finding strength in Christ. And so today we're excited that you're gonna be able to do that together as you uh, bear testimony of that fact. We are standing in a garden that is filled with some of our favorite stories of Jesus Christ. We're gonna take you to some of the places that we love and share with you our witness that Jesus Christ is our strength. I have a firm testimony that Jesus Christ will come to us, that he will not forsake us, no matter what our story looks like. Just like he met the lonely woman at her well, or frightened Peter on a storm-tossed sea, or Lazarus on his darkest day, he will come to each of us. He will meet us where we are, as we are, but he doesn't intend to leave us there. He came to lift us to where He is, as He is. He wants us to become like Him. It's something none of us could do on our own, but with Him we can, through the enabling strength of His grace. I have experienced His grace. He has healed my wounds, strengthened my weakness, increased my capacity, and helped me to become the person only He could help me become. Through the process, we have become dear friends. And maybe you are in need of a friend. Maybe you are having one of your darkest days, or you are lonely, or you are frightened. Turn to Him. Pray for His strength. He will come to you. I know that Jesus Christ lives. I know he lives because I have seen him in my stories and I have felt his love. I love him. He is my greatest friend. I testify that we are children of heavenly parents who love us, that Jesus Christ is our strength and through him we can do all things, that the Holy Ghost will not fail us if we will just listen to his promptings. And I bear testimony of that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Among the many depictions of the Savior here in this beautiful garden, there's one where the Savior is actually ministering to a teenager. Joseph Smith at this time was about the age of a modern teacher and he had serious concerns in his heart. He had been uh, taught things that disturbed him by the ministers of the time about his standing before God. And so one morning he got up very early and went to a forest near his house where the day before he had been swinging an ax and he knelt there in prayer. It's fascinating to me that Heavenly Father answered his prayer by first calling him by name. Heavenly Father knew him. Joseph, he said, and then he introduced him to his son. Joseph, this is my beloved son, hear him. Our most important prayers will be answered as we come to better understand and know the Savior. As we pray to Heavenly Father, he will help us to know the Savior, and the Savior will help us to know everything else. We truly can do all things through Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now we will have the sweet opportunity to hear from our prophet, President Russell M. Nelson, who we love and admire. We invite you to listen carefully to his words. 
Pay particular attention to the promptings or the impressions that you might receive. And then we invite you to gather sometime this month for a lesson or maybe an activity where you will study his words. After President Nelson has borne his testimony, you'll have the opportunity to bear yours, to share your witness of how you have found faith in Christ. We invite you to share brief spirit-led testimonies with each other wherever you are in the world. Thank you for your strength, for the power of your faith. We love you. We need you. We're grateful to President Nelson for sharing his testimony with us, but we're grateful to you for the goodness that you spread all over the world. My dear young friends, thank you for attending this most memorable meeting. I think about you and pray for you often. In our meetings of the First Presidency and the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, we counsel together about how we can best help you. We care about you deeply. Earlier this year, many of you watched Elder Garrett W. Gong and our young men and young women general presidents climb a mountain. You were introduced to this year's theme for youth. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. What a powerful truth this is. Today, in this worldwide testimony meeting, I want you to know that Jesus Christ and his restored gospel are the greatest sources of truth and strength on earth. The strengthening power of the Savior helps all who will come unto him. His gospel is filled with strengthening power because it contains eternal truths augmented by the authority of his priesthood. When we are obedient to his commandments, each one of us can be blessed by his priesthood power. I can think of nothing more important for you to understand at this point in your lives. In connection with this knowledge, may I mention some basic principles for you to think about and pray about. First and foremost, you need to know who you really are. You are a son or a daughter of God. As a member of this church, you are also a son or a daughter of the covenant. And you are each a disciple of Jesus Christ. These three identifiers, child of God, child of the covenant, and disciple of Christ, are more important than any other identifiers. Review these truths about you over and over in your mind. Say them out loud. What's more, you are also the future of the church and of the world. Not only do I believe in you, but your Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ believe in you. You have been sent to earth now because God knew you could be strong and courageous. And God needs strong and courageous sons and daughters on earth now. You have not been sent here to fail you have been sent to earth to succeed and to help others succeed. As you follow Jesus Christ, you will have all the strength and courage you need to face opposition in this hazardous world. I promise you that. Learn how to receive personal revelation. There is no other gift on earth like the gift of the Holy Ghost. Try to improve yourself a little each day. The Holy Ghost can help you. 
you will get better and better at recognizing his promptings. He will help you know what to do and what not to do, where to go and where not to go. He will help you discern who are your true friends and who are not. The Holy Ghost will give you strength and keep you safe. Obey with exactness the word of wisdom and the law of chastity. Doing so will give you physical and spiritual strength that those who do not obey these commandments do not have. Years ago, during my surgical internship, my wife and I attended a reception where the chief surgical resident offered us an alcoholic drink. We politely declined. A few minutes later, he again offered us a drink. Again, we declined. When he approached us a third time, the man was livid. He warned me that if I did not take that drink, he would make life mighty miserable for me. We did not take that drink because we had made a promise to God. We kept our promise. And the chief resident kept his. He was responsible for scheduling operations for interns. He assigned me to assist in the longest and most difficult operations. However, assisting with difficult operations day after day made me a better surgeon. Keeping the word of wisdom actually propelled me forward in my surgical career. Through your continuing faith and obedience, the Lord will increase your ability to move mountains in your life just as he did with me. Prayerfully ask God to help you exercise stronger faith. Faith in our Heavenly Father and his beloved Son, combined with daily repentance, will increase your access to godly power. Recently, I was impressed with a young woman your age who is doing just that. In every prayer, even when she asks a blessing at family mealtime, she prays, please forgive us for our sins and help us to become better people. If perhaps you feel you have strayed off the covenant path too far or too long, let me assure you that is not true. Through the atonement of Jesus Christ, your future can be bright, even brilliant. Speak with your parents and your bishop or branch president. They will help you to get on the path of progress once again. Please come back to the joy and safety of the covenant path. We need you with us. Your ultimate success will come as you yoke yourself to Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. I know that life without God is a life filled with fear. I also know that life with God is a life filled with peace, joy, and power. Resolve to live your life with God. My dear young people, our Heavenly Father and His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, are ready to bless you. They will not forsake you. You can do all things through Christ. I so testify in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen.